here are some things about PEEP that you should probably know if you're going to be working in the ICU that have nothing to do with oxygenation because yes, we love PEEP to help improve oxygenation, but we're not going to be talking about that today. Welcome to another video for the series ICU Nurse Rookie to Ready, and this time we're talking about positive and expiratory pressure. From a cardiac and hemodynamic standpoint, PEEP is going to decrease venous return, increase right ventricular afterload, decrease left ventricular afterload, and possibly decrease cardiac output. PEEP is going to decrease venous return to the right ventricle because it directly puts compression onto the inferior vena cava and because the pressure in the intercardiac chambers is also going to be higher, which makes it difficult for a low pressure system, which is the venous system, to actually be able to move that blood up into the right atrium and then the right ventricle. So we're going to have a decrease of venous return and thus a decrease in preload to the right ventricle. Okay, so what about the afterload component? Well, for the right ventricle, afterload is going to be increased. Again, this is all related to the fact that we have this increase in intrathoracic pressure that is going to cause compression on the pulmonary arteries, contributing to an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance, making it more difficult for that right ventricle to mobilize blood from the right ventricle up into the pulmonary artery, and then ultimately over to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium to the left ventricle and thus decreasing the preload for the left ventricle as well. This is why high levels of PEEP are going to contribute to a decrease in cardiac output for our patients. Something that you have to know and understand that if you are caring for somebody like a patient that has acute respiratory distress syndrome and we're going up and up and up and up on these patients' PEEP values and let's say that they are hemodynamically not doing the best in general, then you really want to be keeping an eye on that patient's blood pressure because you could see a drop in the patient's blood pressure as PEEP goes up. For the left ventricle, afterload is actually going to be decreased. PEEP is going to influence the wall stress or the wall tension of the LV. It's actually going to be decreased, which is going to lead to an overall decrease in left ventricular afterload or how much the LV actually has to work in order to open up the aortic valve and mobilize blood from the LV into the systemic circulation. The cardiac and hemodynamic changes that are influenced by PEEP can both be beneficial for some patient populations and detrimental to others. So that was a lot of cardiac and hemodynamic things, but I do just want to touch on some neuro components because neuro nerds need to know about this stuff too. So anything that is going to increase intrathoracic pressure can inevitably cause an increase in intracranial pressure as well. So if you're taking care of a patient who has already um, increased ICP, the addition of PEEP, and if that PEEP keeps going up and up, that's something that you have to take into consideration. As you can see, PEEP does a lot more than just improve oxygenation, and we definitely need to know these things if we're taking care of critically ill patients.